Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan covers the 12th of August. In the Old Testament, we'll read the Jeremiah chapters 10 through 12, and then in the New Testament, John chapter 14. In the New King James Version, Jeremiah 10. Idols and the true God. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel. Thus says the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them, for the customs of the peoples are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers, so that it will not topple. They are upright like a palm tree, and they cannot speak. They must be carried, because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. And as much as there is none like you, O Lord, you are great, and your name is great in might. Who would not fear you, O King of the nations? For this is your rightful due. For among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is none like you. But they are altogether dull-hearted and foolish. A wooden idol is a worthless doctrine. Silver is beaten into plates. It is brought from Tarshish and gold from Upaz. The work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the metalsmith. Blue and purple are their clothing. They are all the work of skillful man. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth will tremble, and the nations will not be able to endure his indignation. Thus you shall say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom, and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. When he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain. He brings the wind out of his treasuries. Everyone is dull-hearted without knowledge. Every metalsmith is put to shame by an image. For his molded image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are futile, a work of errors. In the time of their punishment, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the maker of all things. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name the coming captivity of Judah. Gather up your wares from the land, O inhabitant of the fortress. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will throw out at this time the inhabitants of the land and will distress them that they may find it so. Woe is me for my hurt. My wound is severe, but I say truly this is an infirmity and I must bear it. My tent is plundered and all my cords are broken. My children have gone from me and they are no more. There is no one to pitch my tent any more or set up my curtains. For the shepherds have become dull-hearted and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Behold, the noise of the report has come, and a great commotion out of the north country, to make the cities of Judah desolate, a den of jackals. O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. O Lord, correct me, but with justice, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. Pour out your fury on the Gentiles who do not know you, and on the families who do not call on your name. They have eaten up Jacob, devoured him, and consumed him, and made his dwelling place desolate. As I'm pulling up Jeremiah chapter 11, we go through the Old Testament with this uh, Bible reading plan one time in the year, and the New Testament twice in the year. Jeremiah 11, the broken covenant, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, hear the words of this covenant and speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and say to them, thus says the Lord God of Israel, cursed is the man who does not obey the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day I brought them out of the land of Egypt from the iron furnace saying, obey my voice and do according to all that I command you. So shall you be my people, and I will be your God, that I may establish the oath which I have sworn to your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. And I answered and said, So be it, Lord. Then the Lord said to me, Proclaim all these words in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, saying, Hear the words of this covenant and do them. 
for I earnestly exhorted your fathers in the day. I brought them up out of the land of Egypt until this day, rising early and exhorting, saying, Obey my voice. Yet they did not obey or incline their ear. But everyone followed the dictates of his evil heart. Therefore, I will bring upon them all the words of this covenant, which I commanded them to do, but which they have not done. And the Lord said to me, a conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers who refused to hear my words, and they have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, behold, I will surely bring calamity on them, which they will not be able to escape. And though they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of your cities were your gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, you have set up altars to that shameful thing, altars to burn incense to Baal. So do not pray for this people or lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their trouble. What has my beloved to do in my house, having done lewd deeds with many, and the holy flesh has passed from you? When you do evil, then you rejoice. The Lord called your name, green olive tree, lovely and of good fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he has kindled fire on it, and its branches are broken. For the Lord of hosts who planted you has pronounced doom against you for the evil of the house of Israel and for and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense to Baal. Jeremiah's life is threatened. Now the Lord gave me knowledge of it, and I know it, for you showed me their doings. But I was like a docile lamb brought to the slaughter, and I did not know that they had devised schemes against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be remembered no more. But, O Lord of hosts, you who judge righteously, testing the mind and the heart, let me see your vengeance on them. For to you I have revealed my cause. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the men of Anathoth, who seek your life, saying, Do not prophesy in the name of the Lord, lest you die by our hand. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. And there shall be no remnant of them. For I will bring catastrophe on the men of Anathoth, even in the year of their punishment. As I'm pulling up Jeremiah chapter 12, um, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages on DanielParsonsMinistry.com. And there's also on the Healthy Living tab on the menu, hundreds of really delicious vegan recipes that my wife Patricia makes. She's a gourmet chef. and mm, They're delicious. Jeremiah 12. Jeremiah's question, righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you, yet let me talk with you about your judgments. Why does the way of the wicked per prosper? Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? You, you have planted them, yes, they have taken root. They grow, yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their mind. But you, O Lord, know me. You have seen me, and you have tested my heart toward you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? The beasts and birds are consumed for the wickedness of those who dwell there, because they said, he will not see our final end. The Lord answers Jeremiah, if you have run with the footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace in which you trusted, they wearied you, then how will you do in the floodplain of the Jordan? For even your brothers, the house of your father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Yes, they have called a multitude after you. Do not believe them, even though they speak smooth words to you. I have forsaken my house. I have left my heritage. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hand of her enemies. My heritage is to me like a lion in the forest. It cries out against me. Therefore, I have hated it. My heritage is to me like a speckled vulture. The vultures all around are against her. Come, assemble all the beasts of the field. Bring them to devour. Many rulers have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate. Desolate it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate. 
because no one takes it to heart, the plunderers have come on all the desolate heights in the wilderness, for the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. They have sown wheat, but reap thorns. They have put themselves to pain, but do not profit. But be ashamed of your harvest because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus says the Lord against all my evil neighbors who touch the inheritance, which I have caused my people Israel to inherit. Behold, I will pluck them out of their land and pluck out the house of Judah from among them. Then it shall be after I pluck them out that I will return and have compassion on them and bring them back, everyone to his heritage and everyone to his land. And it shall be if they will learn carefully the ways of my people to swear by my name as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal. Then they shall be established in the midst of my people. But if they do not obey, I will utterly pluck up and destroy that nation, says the Lord. So now I'm going to pull up our New Testament scripture for today, which is John chapter 14. And while I do that, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. We've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos there. We have this daily Bible reading plan. So John chapter 14. Oh, just uh, search for Daniel Parsons Ministry on YouTube and you'll find me. The way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Father revealed, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. The answered prayer, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus promises another helper. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Indwelling of the Father and the Son. A little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest him to, my, to my, my, myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me the gift of his peace. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me to say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Now I have told you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. That's the end of today's 
Bible reading. I hope to see you on tomorrow's and God bless you until then. Bye for now.